He's bearded and bored. Let's go find something to do. <laughs> Finally! Good to see you, man. <laughs> hey! Hi! Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. How's things? Well, crazy, but we're here now. Yeah. <laughs> I just said, yes, man. So you may be asking yourself, hey, what the f is Bearded doing? Well, I can't really tell you everything that I'm doing, but I can tell you why I abducted Jesse from the Stilla channel. <laughs> We're going to uh, make a whisk, not a whiskey. We're gonna make a beer. A beer with corn and barley and rye. It's a beer that we're making without any hops. So what are we doing for the recipe today? We're doing a five gallon batch. We're gonna do seven and a quarter pounds of corn, ground corn. You can use um, your own malted corn if you want to. Check out the video up here if you wanna see how I made this malted corn. But this is actually not for this recipe today. Today, this is a gift for someone special, not you. <laughs> Today, mm. we're gonna use this corn, big giant bag, seven and a quarter pounds of cracked corn, and then over on that side, we've got, let's see, what was it? Four and a quarter of two row barley, and two and three quarter pounds of rye. So, now we're just gonna wait for our water to boil and I don't know, you wanna make out or something? Oh yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <sighs> Propaney. We're at about 160-ish degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry, Jesse. <laughs> and uh, so we're gonna go ahead and drop our corn in the water to uh, get that to start hydrating, get on the process to uh, gelatinizing, which is gonna turn it into concrete. So I'm not looking forward to that, but it's all worth it. I did this the really smart way by tearing the hole in the middle of the bag. You wanna <clears throat> stir out my dough balls? So when you don't run this through the still, mm -hmm. are you going to run it the whole lot, or are you going to filter it, or um, are you going to run it on the ground? If I were to run this through a still, I would probably not have sediment in the still, because that would burn in the bottom of a still. But I wouldn't know that because I don't do that ever because it's illegal in the United States to distill alcohol for the purposes of consumption. Suckers. Not yeah. legal for me. <laughs> he gets to well, do it. Illegal for me here, but yeah, he can't he can't do it here. So uh, the purpose of this video is so that you can see two parts of the whole process. Since I can't distill, but Jesse can, we're doing the mash here, and then he's gonna go home, and he's gonna do this exact same recipe and distill it, which will be amazing for you. Not so much for me, I'll just be really jealous. <laughs> this is just for educational purposes anyway. All right, what do you think? Let's go ahead and throw some in? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and throw in a couple of handfuls of uh, finely ground two row barley and uh, let that help to uh, break down some of the starches as we're coming up to gelatinization and um, you know it's the the enzymes are gonna denature pretty fast in the heat but it's while they're active it's gonna help us to uh, loosen this up so it doesn't turn into concrete So we're at uh, 190 degrees on the corn and I can already start to smell it scorching on the bottom because my spoon is too short. Can't scrape it up off of there. Nice and uh, steamy on the lens I'm sure. But you can see how that's uh, gone from nice and flaky to uh, nice and gloopy and kind of gross. And uh, that's what you're looking for. 
<laughs> yeah, being able to run over snakes is cool, but honestly, I think I would take New Zealand where there are no snakes <laughs> any day of the week. So uh, my dad is uh, drinking all kinds of wonderful stuff that uh, Jesse brought. And uh, all right, we have let our corn sit for about 10 minutes at 190, and now we're gonna throw in a little bit of our, a little bit more of the barley as that's starting to cool down. And we're gonna transfer it into a bigger container because I, <laughs> I misjudged my water a little bit. So we're gonna put that into a bigger pot so that that can uh, cool down a little bit more. And then uh, we're going to add the rest of the barley, add some more water and let that mash at about 145 for what, like an hour, hour and a half? I'd say an hour. Okay. But, uh, that's Hour's good. Me talking. That's what we're gonna do. Yeah. stirred in while that loosened up. Yeah. So that can just kind of chill and do its thing. And we'll add the yeah, rest later. Down to team. Yeah. And if it goes low, you'll just If it goes low, we'll just it. bring it back up. I'm not I'm not too bothered about it. I mean a lot of guys are so strict about their mash schedule. I'm not because I'm kind of an idiot. So <laughs> you know. Mmm bright light. <clears throat> so I may or may not be a tiny bit intoxicated. And it is, where is he? Yeah, it's his fault. Yeah, it's my fault. Yeah. Apologies. So uh, we're going to uh, go ahead and finish up this uh, beer and uh, get that done. We've uh, let this sit for a while. Yeah, at least And an uh, it's down to about 135 degrees now. We're going to uh, bring up the temp to 145, throw in the barley and rye, and then let that sit right at 145 for about another hour. All right, let's get going. Oh, it's thinned right out already. Wow. That is crazy. Oh, this chunky denseness down in the bottom. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I just, you know, I don't want to get demonetized because of my Incredibly foul language. <laughs> yeah, because you're definitely going to offend all the brewers with swearing. Well, my mom watches my channel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're at about 145, 146-ish. We're going to kill the heat. Or at least drop it down a little bit more. And throw in our barley and rye. Good morning, everybody. So uh, we did a little drinking, a little chit chat last night. Had a good old time. I totally didn't abduct him. He's free to go <laughs> now. Now he's free to go. So Jesse's going to go home. Once he goes back to New Zealand, he's going to make the same version of this beer and distill it because he can do that in New Zealand where it's legal to distill for personal consumption. <sighs> anyway, uh, last night we did uh, the full mash and then just did the Australian chill method. Not necessarily in honor of Jesse because he's lived so close to Australia, but just because I'm incredibly lazy and I was too drunk to mess with it. But it was about 40 degrees here last night, so it uh, cooled down on its own. And uh, now I'm just gonna toss it in the fermenter throw in some yeast and uh, let it do its thing. All right, because I'm fermenting on grain, um, it's gonna be really challenging to take a gravity reading for this uh, corn beer. I'm gonna see if I can suck some right off of the top. Let's see what we can do. It's sort of working. Let's see if I had a refractometer. 
this wouldn't be a problem because you only need like a drop of a sample for a refractometer. But I am still doing it low tech. So I'm going to suffer through this. So I was able to get just enough for a reading, and it looks like we are at 1.090. So, hmm, we were really kind of faced while we were doing this. But uh, so I am going to freeze a little sample um, just so that eventually when I get a refractometer, I can check that. So I'll just keep the, the sample in the freezer next to my sperm. And, um, you know, because who doesn't freeze their sperm? You never know when you're going to need that. Um, so now I'm just going to toss this in the fermenter and throw in the yeast. And I might throw in a little bit of uh, yeast nutrient just because I like doing that and make sure that uh, everything's got enough uh, you know, juice to ferment all the way out. All right, so let's get that done. Yeah, it's crazy sweet. That wort is crazy sweet. It tastes like malto meal with sugar in it. <laughs> I think I might add a little bit of water to that. There's so much grain in there. I'm gonna lose a lot of volume just to the grain. Okay, so I added about a half gallon more water to this and it seems uh, a little bit looser, which is nice. And so I'm stirring that up. Now I've uh, screwed up my hydrometer reading. So uh, since I've diluted it a little bit, so I'm trying to get this a good stir and I'm just going to take a little sample. That's all I need. I'm going to throw in about a half a teaspoon of the uh, diammonium phosphate. There's so much nutrition in this uh, fermentation. I doubt that I'll need it, but it doesn't hurt. Last but not least, some daddy, some distiller's active dry yeast put that where it normally goes. Mmm, spicy. All right, so we're good. Spigot's closed. Everything's in there. We'll lock it up. So if you want to uh, follow along in this journey, click right up here. We'll have the link up there for uh, Jesse's video uh, of the distilling part. And uh, if you uh, enjoyed this video, if you learned anything, if you had a good time watching it, do me a favor, hit the like button. That really helps out the channel. And uh, you can also hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon right next to it so that you can follow along when I post new content. If you have any questions about this recipe, go ahead and ask them down in the comments below. And uh, I'll put any uh, relevant links for uh, stuff I used today down in the description as well. Thanks for watching. Talk at you later. So, uh, despite common myth, um, not everybody in New Zealand is a hobbit. I have proof. They're a little hairy. With talon toenails. With talon toenails. Mm -hmm. But definitely not hobbit feet. And also, he's too tall to be a hobbit. <laughs> <laughs>